the only one in the apartment, so I might as well record this now. Hi everyone, I might have mentioned this before, but I've always wanted to make a history themed video for a while. Not only because info videos seem to be a hot topic on YouTube right now these days, but also because I want to put some of my history degree to use. Because this may go on to become a series, I would just like to jot down some points which I think are important in approaching any historical topic. First, take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Every historical writer has a slight bias to their work, and I'm no exception. I'm not really a writer, I'm just someone with an undergraduate degree. Additionally, this is a YouTube video which cannot be cited in scholarly work, and in terms of your own knowledge, you should regard it with healthy suspicion. I will, however, be putting my sources in the description. The primary source I'll be utilizing in this video is Thucydides. I hated reading it for class, and I hate that I have to read it again for this video, but it really is the best primary source for this time period. Nonetheless, any ancient history was not written according to our standards we accept as rationalists today. The sad thing about getting a history degree is that learning that many of the common, more fun myths about ancient rulers were not true because they were often written by people long after the figure's death who wished to lionize or demonize them. I guess I'll call this Spartan gullibility, or how the Spartans were gullible enough to believe that the Athenians didn't build a siege wall against them because they said so. We're looking at the post-Persian War Greece. The slave-owning nationalist Greeks evicted the hegemonic emancipationist Persian Empire. AKA, the good guys beat the bad guys, as we learned this from history class in high school. Actually, whether or not the Persian Empire was slave-free as it has gone down in history is worth discussion, and if I get to t some time to do research, maybe I'll put together another video in the future. My point is, is that Greece right now has been saved from being ruled by foreigners, which was a nightmare to the xenophobic city-states. But this wasn't the end of their problems. The primary issue many Greeks took with their liberated society was that the power imbalance over Greece, which had been forged during the Persian War, never faded away. By 454 BC, the Athenians had solidified their hegemony over the Delian League, or the Delian League, by moving their treasury from the island of Delos to Athens. This action actually occurred in the midst of the First Peloponnesian War, which took place from 460 to 445 BC in what was mostly a series of skirmishes over a majority peacetime. Now, us listeners live in a post-World War world, and our conceptions of warfare are marked by total war, but this was not applicable to the ancient world, where warfare was pretty much seasonal. The main issue this paper will discuss is Athens' attempt to build hegemony in Greece by building protective walls between its city and port, which it had agreed to disassemble. Now, the concept of fortified structures was not new to Greece. Most states had a structure known as a necropolis, which was not unique to Athens, which citizens would hide behind during sieges. The point is that Acropoli were normal, and intraport walls were not. These would have enabled a land population, such as Athens, to survive sieges for much longer because of their connection to the sea. This decision was hardly a surprising choice for the Athenians, who faced immense destruction of their settlement because of the Persian occupation. As Thucydides wrote, only isolate portions of the circumference had been left standing, and most of the houses were in ruins, though a few remained, in which the Persian grandees had taken up their corners. The issue with building these fortifications, however, was that Athenians looked like they were preparing for another long war, and without an evident enemy in sight, the Spartans believed this would likely be an intercity state conflict. And as I mentioned, they had had several skirmishes with the Athenians during this time period. Despite the tradition that Spartans are enamored with war, they actually sought to stop the Athenians from building these walls. Sparta had not been doing well in the last few years. A large portion of their slave population had rebelled in 462 BC and set up a camp in the easily defendable, I'm gonna mispronounce this, Mount Ethome. Therefore, the Spartans sent an embassy to the Athenians asking them not to build the walls. This was a reaction based on Spartans' suspicion of Athenian hegemony. The Spartans suggested to the Athenians that their efforts would be better spent helping the other Greek city-states in the north tear down their walls because the Persian threat was now gone. Subsequently, the Athenians imprisoned these emissaries so they could not report on the walls being built. In turn, the Athenians sent one of their own to Sparta to distract them. This was Themistocles, the general and statesman. The first thing he did upon arriving in Sparta was to waste time. Not immediately meeting with figures of authority, and instead wasting time and canceling meetings to buy times for the Athenians to wreck their walls. The answer that Themistocles gave to the Spartans was that they were not rebuilding the walls, and he denied all reports coming in to the Spartans that was telling them this was not the case. Thucydides stated that through their friendship for him, the Spartans trusted him, although they kept sending out messengers to Athens, only for them to be continuously imprisoned. Finally, Themistocles was given 
word that the walls were completed, he then publicly announced to the Spartans that the city was now fortified against any threat of invasion. These walls would be known in history as the Long Walls. The Athenians hid behind them when the coming Spartan invasion. How this war ended and what it meant for Greece might be a better subject matter for another video, but I'll see if this sort of video ends up as a series. I remember my professor in my ancient Greece class attributed Spartan gullibility to their culture. The Spartans were incredibly laconic, and the word actually came from their culture. They were not given to lying, so by losing a few emissaries and taking their former allies' word as absolute truth, the Athenians were ultimately able to hide an entire wall-building operation under the Spartans' noses. And that's the end of my historical narrative. This illustration depicts Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. If you like it, you can actually get it in my Redbubble shop. I'll leave a link below. Evicted the hegemonic emancipation by 1940. <laughs> by 454 BC, the Athenians had solidified their hegemony. Is that how you say it? Okay, had to look how to pronounce hegemony. But this was not apl applicable to the ancient world. Hegemony. Thucydides, 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 